All right, so today we're looking at the Taylor Expansions. Specifically, we're contemplating the following question. Um, when? When is this equation valid? Meaning this function that's not a polynomial, it's equal to some sort of polynomial, and we want to know, well, is that always true for any value of x? Does that work? Um, more specifically, I guess we could rephrase the question like this. For which for which values of x is this true? Uh, and it turns out that it's true for some values and not others. And there's always some sort of limitation, especially when, not always, but when we have some sort of asymptote on the bottom or other discontinuities, can almost be guaranteed that there'll be some sort of limitations as to the answer to this question for which values of x is it true. Um, let's consider this for example. Uh, suppose I give you, someone gives you a series here, super simple one, power series. It's exactly this one as a matter of fact. Because uh, if you were to write this, it's the sub all the powers of x starting with the zeroth power all the way to the infinite power and adding them all up. And ask you for which values of x as a series converge. What you could do is you could take one of the many, many tests that we've learned in previous sections and apply it. Specifically, we could try the root test. So by the root test, we could say, okay, I'm going to look at the nth root of a n. That would be the nth root of x to the n. That would be x. And we could say that by the root nth, by the root test, um, we take the limit of this creature here, the nth root of a n, which would be the limit of just x as x goes or as n goes towards infinity. Since there's no end here, the limit is just x. And we conclude by the root test that if the absolute value of x is less than 1, we have convergence. Uh, if, this, so this is a separate case, if the absolute value of x is greater than 1, we have divergence. And if the absolute value of x is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. And so now we have three different cases to worry about. Um, we already know if the x's are less than 1 in absolute value, we have convergence. So you can make a picture here from negative 1 to 1. We already know that in here we have convergence. Um, this part over here tells me that if x is larger than 1 in absolute value, we have divergence. So we have divergence here and divergence here. Um, we can write it divergence and divergence here. And if x is equal to 1, that would mean that, sorry, the absolute value of x equal to 1, that means that either x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 1. If those are the cases, then it's inconclusive. Now, to make it conclusive, what you've got to do is you've got to take each of these cases and go back and plug it into the original series and see if it converges or averages for these particular x values. So we check them separately, not with the root test because that one is inconclusive. So we have to try some other method. Uh, so we have the series of 1 to the n as n runs from 0 to infinity. Well, since this is just adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Clearly, that's going to diverge. So this diverges here. On this one, we have negative 1 to the n as n runs from 0 to infinity. Since the sum end, the thing we're adding, doesn't even go to 0, there's no hope of convergence. So this one diverges by the divergence test. And so we have com a complete list of all the x's for which the series converges. It is from negative 1 to 1, opens the interval here, and it is the middle here that where it converges. And I know that everywhere else it fails. It fails here, it fails here, it fails here, it fails here. 
This is the conclusive and final result for the answer for which x for the for the answer for the question which x's make the series converge. That's it. That's in order to make to for this bridge to be the same here. We have the bridge between the world of polynomials and non-polynomials. In order for this one to work, one at least one of the things that we need is that this side over here converges, and so. In this case, that only happens for x's that are between negative 1 and positive 1. So it's a part partial answer to this question. When is this bridge valid? It certainly won't be valid unless the right converges. So it narrows it down quite a bit. Okay, we should try a different one. Um, find the x values for which the series converges. So we try again, similar question. Let's try by the root test. Um, by the root test again. Uh, so I take the nth root of a n term. That would be x minus 3 to the n all over 5 to the n. And that would be the nth root here. And I'm going to take the limit on both sides as n runs towards infinity. This would give me x minus 3 all over 5. Whoops. And I'm taking the limit here as n runs towards infinity. That would just be x minus 3 over over 5. Now we have three cases. If we have x minus 3 over 5, is that if that's less than 1, we have converges, convergence. If x minus 3 over 5 is greater than 1, we have divergence. If x minus 3 over 5 is equal to 1, we have an inconclusive test. And so we go on and we check this. A little bit of algebra tells us that the absolute value of x over 3 is less than 5. By multiplying both sides by 5, that tells me that the quantity x minus 3 has got to be between negative 5 and 5. And, of course, I could add 3 to each side. Um, adding 3 here and adding 3 here and adding 3 here would isolate x for me, making x be less than 8 and greater than negative 2. So I know that from negative 2 to 8, notice how this is centered around 3. Um, I'll say more about that later. That's because the expansion was around uh, 3 x minus 3 tells you that's where the expansion centered at. So it definitely, it always converges close, faster and quicker here around the point where you're taking the Taylor expansion. Uh, the further you go away from 3, the less accurate the um, polynomial expansion is to the function that it generated, was generated by or from. All right, so we have convergence here from negative 2 to 8. Um, we have divergence here. If um, if that number is greater than 1, so we have divergence here, divergence here. And we have inconclusive in the middle, so we have to check it separately. Um, so either x minus 3 um, if x minus 3 over 5 is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. Or if x minus 5 or, sorry, x minus 3 is equal to negative 1, the test is also inconclusive. So x minus 3 equals 5. So x equals um, to 2. Or x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. So x is equal to... Uh, positive 2. Okay. Just kidding. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so then we, what we got to do is we got to take this guy and plug it back into the original one. We can't use the root test because that one failed us. So we have to go back to the original one and maybe try a different test. Same thing with the other endpoint. We got to go back and plug it in into the original one. 
and plug it in. So if I put 8 there, that would give me the sum of 8 minus 3 raised to the n all over 5 to the n. And of course, this would give me 5 to the n over 5 to the n, uh, which would just give me the summation of 1s, which would clearly diverge. For example, by the divergence theorem. On the other hand, if I have negative 2, that gives me um, negative 2 minus 3 over 5. Uh, that would be raised to the n, and that would be raised to the n. That would be summation of negative 5 over 5 raised to the n. That would be summation of negative 1 to the n. And, of course, that would diverge as well by the divergence test. And so neither one of these uh, endpoints gets filled out or included in the interval of convergence. And so we have that this is the final answer. The interval of convergence is between negative 2 and 8, not inclusive of either endpoint. Sometimes, every once in a while, you'll check each one of these, and you check them into the original function, and what will happen is maybe sometimes one works or the other one works when you plug them back into the, here, into that one, and in that case, you would fill in this bubble here and include it in the interval, depending on which one works. But that's how you answer this question. Uh, one more time, maybe um, this one. Uh, oh, the other thing is sometimes they'll ask you in a different way. They'll ask you, what well, find the radius of convergence. So to find the radius of convergence, try to imagine uh, that every one of these convergence is a growing circle around the point where the expansion is taken, in this case 3. Imagine a circle of, th of uh, standard at three. Imagine how big of a circle do you have to can you make until you get to the point where you're diverging. So that would be this distance from here to here is five, and from here to here is five. This is called the this part right here five. That's called the radius of convergence. In other words, you could make a circle here around five, and the and the series would converge for everything in that circle. Uh, assuming, for example, you could take complex numbers. So you could take things off of the real number line. That's why it's called the radius of convergence. And so sometimes you'll see it asked like this, the interval of convergence. Sometimes you'll see it find the radius of convergence. Okay, uh, let's try this one. This one I'm going to try by the, by the ratio test just for fun. Ratio test. So I want an plus 1 all over an. So this would be x plus 2 to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 times n all over x plus 2 to the n. Okay. And then we'll clean it up a little bit. a n plus 1 all over a n. That becomes n over n plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 to the n all over x plus 2 to the n. This part cancels. Uh, this part goes to 1. And so when we take the limit on both sides, clearly as n is going towards infinity, we get that the limit as n goes towards infinity of the n plus 1 term divided over the n term is equal to just x plus 2. Okay. Now, um... We have three conclu three possibilities. If the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 1, we have convergence. If the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than 1, we have divergence. If x plus 2 and absolute value is equal to 1, we have an inconclusive test. And we have to check each one separately. Inconclusive. So clearly we already know if I centered it at negative 2, by the way, here's another way to see the radius of convergence. It's 1. From negative 2, the distance from x to negative... Another way to read this is the distance from x to negative 2 should be less than 1. So I'll go to the right one and to the left one. So negative 1, if you wanted to skip all the algebra. Or you could do the algebra. You could go x plus 2 is between 1, negative 1, add negative 2 to both sides. That becomes negative 1, negative 3. You could do it the algebra way too.
if you wanted to. All right, so we have that this, so far we know convergence here. We know that it diverges here. No good, no good based on this. Then we just have to check the endpoints. Uh, let's check. Uh, so x plus 2 equals 1 or x plus 2 equals negative 1. So x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 3. So let's check this one. Summation of negative 1 plus 2 raised to the n all over n. That becomes summation of 1 all over n. That's a harmonic series that diverges. Um, that's what happens when I take this one and plug it into here and check it. Now I'm going to take this one and plug it into here and check it. That would give me the summation of negative 3 plus 2 raised to the n all over n. That's the summation of negative 1 to the n. And this one converges by the alternating series test. And so that would give me the following situation. This one works right here, and this one does not. So the interval of convergence would be converges for the x's that are between negative 3 and negative 1. Not including the negative the negative one, but including the, the negative three. Okay. That's how you figure out for which axis does it converge. You're basically just practicing all the other tests that we've learned with a variable x in there. And uh, you figure out which values of x make it work. Okay. One more. And so this one will do, either you could do the ratio test or the root test. I think both of those work really well for, for many of these problems. Let's do ratio today. By the ratio test, let's look at the limit of a n plus one all over a n. That would give us n plus one to the third times x minus 10 to the n plus one, all over five to the n plus one times this all over n to the third times x minus 10 to the n plus, or no, not n plus one, just n. So this would give us, let me think. Um, it was n plus one all over n raised to the third. It would also give us one over five. It also give us x minus 10 on top. And everything else would cancel. This limit for large n's would give us uh, one. So that would just give us x minus 10 all over 5. And so we have, again, three scenarios, x minus 10 over 5 less than 1. Then we have convergence. Another case, x minus 10 all over 5 greater than 1. I'm applying the ratio test conditions or conclusions here. If this is true, then we have divergence. But again, like the root test, the ratio test is inconclusive if this ratio become the limit of this ratio is equal to one. So this tells me x minus ten is less than five. So I want all the points around ten that are less than five away from it. So that gives me five to fifteen. I know I'm going to converge again. This tells this is telling me. The interval of convergence, the interval, oh, sorry, the radius of convergence is 5 in this case. We have divergence here and divergence to the left of 5 because that's where the places where the absolute value of x minus 10 over 5 is greater than 1. And we have inconclusive here. So to check this one, I need to find out what happens with this is equal to 1 or is equal to negative 1. This would give me x minus 10 is equal to 5. So x equals 15. This one give me x minus 10 is equal to negative 5. So x is equal to 5. So we plug it this. We're going to plug this guy back into that one and check it separately. Again, plug that one back into that one and check it separately. So the first one would be the sum of n to the third. 
times 15 minus 10 raised to the n all over 5 to the n. Uh, that becomes summation of just n to the third. That clearly diverges by the divergence test. Checking the other one, it gives me 5 minus 10 raised to the nth all over 5 to the nth times n to the third. After simplifying that, it gives me n to the third times negative 1 to the n. That diverges by the divergence test. And so neither that one nor that one should be included in the answer or in the in the interval of convergence. The radius of convergence is 5 because the radius of this circle is 5 and that's the largest circle that fits around 10 uh, before it goes into divergence territory. And so divergence is the radius of divergence of convergence is 5. If I somebody asks what's the interval of convergence, well the interval would be just this interval from 5 to negative 5. All right, that's uh, I think that'll do it for now. This this is how you answer the question for which values of x does the series converge? And again, this question is related to understanding for which values of x is this connection valid between the non-polynomial-looking function and the polynomial function. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.